Welcome to Wrist Watch Overhauling, the brand new channel where we're going to learn how to take apart watches, fix them, and hopefully get them running again. I am Sean Korb. I'm brand new at this. This is a brand new hobby, but something I've been interested in for a while. So we're going to dive in and see what kind of tools I'm going to use. First on the bench is the Bergeon casing cushion. Uh, I chose to go with the black model number 5395-75N. Uh, basically what a casing cushion does is it's squishy, as you can see, so you can set watches down onto it without worrying about damaging them. They have a couple uh, different models, uh, clear ones, white ones, black ones, but I chose black. Next on the bench is Rodico, uh, probably from what I hear the most important thing to have. This is the Bergeon 6033 Rodico. And Rodico, what that is, kind of like a putty. It's basically like a special cleaning tool that's used uh, not only for cleaning, but uh, helping hold on to smaller little items, uh, pivots, things like that. Helps remove fingerprints or stains or debris from an area. You can also use it for holding tiny little parts from a watch or making sure that something holds still while you're working on it. It's quite a useful uh, tool that um, seems every time I watch any kind of videos, someone's using it for some new idea that I never even thought you could use it for. The main thing that I've seen other people using it for mostly is for removing the very small jewels that are in a watch. Uh, they're so tiny, sometimes they're hard to get with the tweezers. So you can use the Rodico as almost like a sticky finger to reach down in there and grab those pivots right from the watch. I have a feeling I'll be using this a lot. Next up is the Burjon 7922 watch spring barrel installation tool, and that's used for closing the mainspring covers. I'll be working on uh, manual watches that uh, have a mainspring, and when servicing these, you're going to have to open them up, um, either replace the mainspring or clean the mainspring and re-oil it. Uh, but this is used to uh, pop that mainspring cover right back down on. Uh, closing it so that way you don't damage it. Of course, you can use other tools to do it, but this just makes it extra easy. As you can see, it's a pretty tiny little tool. Uh, should be relatively easy to use and should be a fun tool. Okay, uh, next up is the Bergeon 4932 watch case knife. This is a professionally made knife that is specific for removing the back cases. As you can see, it's got a single blade, uh, relatively sharp. Uh, you don't want a dull knife to try and pop over in that back because you'll damage the watch or the case or even the seal that's in there. Um, so the blade is made specific. And the very cool thing about this 4932, as you can see on the back side there, it is made by Swiss Army Knives, uh, the manufacturer Victoronics, I think I, if I say that correctly, I've always known them as Swiss Army Knives. And moving right along, we have the Bergeon 4040P. P is the synthetic reversible watch movement holder in large. Uh, they make this one in a metal, which is just the 4040, but I chose to go with the P, which is the synthetic plastic version. Um, it's a hard plastic that I just felt would be better off for making sure that the watches stay scratch-free and still has the same quality as the metal version, but... Uh, I don't know, I just kind of like the black look of this one. Uh, 
and basically you just twist that little knob right there and uh, the nice thing with this is you can do a uh, watch movement as small as 20 millimeters all the way up to 43 millimeters uh, making sure that you can work on any size watch that you need to the other cool thing is it's double sided too Alright, and next up is the Bergeon 7767F, which is a stainless steel spring bar tool. Most people think of these when it comes to uh, removing a band, uh, watch band, uh, getting those pins out, uh, which this makes it very easy instead of uh, using a paper clip like some people do. This is a must have. Uh, it has a forked end, 1.20 millimeter wide, and a pointed end uh, with a diameter of 0 0.80 millimeters. And this thing just feels great. Uh, nice texture on it, nice and heavy duty. And the great part is you can replace the ends that are available, uh, both forked and pointed. So these are the Bergeon 6938 dial protectors. It's a pack of five of them. This is a pretty not necessary purchase, but uh, since I'm new, I don't want to make mistakes. Um, you'll see a lot of people just using plastic bags or whatnot. Uh, and this basically just goes under the hands when it's time to remove the uh, hands off the dial and you don't want to scratch up the dial. Just slide it under, use your levers, and pop those hands right off. And they were pretty inexpensive, so might as well go with them. And that's the Bergeon 6938 there. All right, the next one's kind of a funny one. Uh, this is the 8-Ball, or also known as the Bergeon 8008 watch case opening ball. It's basically just a rubber ball. And when I first saw it on some videos, I was like, what is that for? but you actually use it to twist off the back of screw-on cases and just it being a rubber ball makes it easy to just screw those right off and without scratching it. Last up, I have the loop. This is a jeweler's loop, uh, 12 times magnification, and a number two, which is a five times magnification. When I was doing research, they said to start off with two, so um, I started with the 2611TN, which is a five times magnification. This will be your kind of general use, uh, looking pretty close down without having to um, strain your eyes too much. And I also got the 1458A, 12 times magnification. This will be the one that I'll use to get real close deep down in a watch to see the tiniest of screws and tiny, tiny little parts and hopefully don't screw anything up. So these are the items that I got so far uh, to start my journey into watchmaking and horology. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks.